Right, this is your African King of Comedy, Michael Blackson. You watch a real friends do a talk. Get real with it, my son. of the NFL player rankings have been released. Was a little bit of controversy at number one. Lil, I know you're all for this. I know you 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 probably was probably one of the voters who voted for, for Tom Brady to <laughs> get the number one spot. Um, but he did edge out uh Aaron Donald um for the number one spot. Uh moved up six spots because last year he was seventh on, on the list. Um, I'm gonna let you go first because I, you know, because you'd be more gung ho than me about yeah. Tom Brady. So I'm gonna let you go first. Did Tom Brady deserve the number one spot? Absolutely. I don't think there's no question. You know, I'm very prerogative on the record for a long time that Tom Brady got robbed with no gun when it came to winning the MVP. Listen, I understand Aaron Rodgers is a, is a guy, he's a dude, he can play quarterback pretty well. You know, I'm not going to take anything away from the cat, but Tom Brady is that guy. Like, you lead the league in passing yards at your age and attempts and completions and touchdowns. I mean, what are we doing here? Like, I think a lot of people need to have a conversation to come together and figure out what the criteria is for winning the MVP. Because I think things switch up to the liking of somebody, right? One year is, oh, the best record, and that's the... What thing we gonna roll with? Then it's stats. Then it's like you know different things. There's different derogatory terms when it comes to who's the MVP. If that's the case, then everybody that wins the number one seed should be the MVP because I think Tom Brady. Not I think the stats are what they are. He outperformed Aaron Rodgers in a lot of statistics. Maybe Aaron Rodgers had a few uh, interceptions and things of that nature, but that was about it. You know, when I look at Tom Brady. And all the things he does at the line of scrimmage before the play even develops, that's MVP. Getting guys in tune with what you're doing, that's MVP. Making sure that guys are watching film. Tom Brady is watching film. He's the first one to, to leave. Or, excuse me, the first one to get there and the last one to leave. Just the, all the little nuances that people are not talking about is why Tom Brady is the best at what he does. And, you know, at the end of the day, this is a popularity contest. I'd rather take my information from players that watch film in a different realm than what we watch, you know, on Sundays and highlights. These are guys that's actually going up against these guys, and they say Tom Brady's the GOAT, and I ain't denying that. He's number one. All right, now, y'all know I, I, I've been going to war for Tom Brady for a long time. I, You know, I'm, I'm the one that gave him the nickname Tom Too Cool. But I will say this. I did not feel like Tom Brady should be the number one ranked player in the NFL right now. Um, I know you mentioned the stats. Numbers was slightly better in a couple of categories. He also played a couple more games than uh, Aaron Rodgers last season. So that kind of, you know, accommodates for that. Um, you know, but even with that, I mean, the, you know, Less, far less turnovers from Aaron Rodgers, though four four interceptions to to twelve from Tom Brady. Um, my biggest thing, though, know, with with the pick for number one, because actually, to be honest with you, I thought Aaron Donald should have been ranked number one um, this this year. The my issue with it is is as good as Tom Brady was, he's another year older, and I know we've people been talking about Tom Brady's age for probably the past ten years now. But it's hard for me to push him ahead just in the rankings of Aaron Rodgers, uh, you know, just because, I mean, coming off of back-to-back -back MVPs, um, you know, I just felt like this was this was another one of those, all right, it's Tom Brady, let's just put him up there because he came back out of retirement and let's make Tom Brady the number one guy. Um, you know, and I was actually, I was talking to my cousin yesterday about this, and he's also a huge Tom Brady fan. And I was saying that, you know, if Brady, if the Buccaneers had won the Super Bowl last year and they put him as the number one uh, rated player in the NFL, I would have no problem with it. You know what I mean? But I, I, just, I can't I can't give him the number one spot this season, you know, just because, again, I mean, it, listen, whatever, however you want to call it, there was one MVP and, and his name was Aaron Rodgers. So it, I think. 
he's younger than Tom Brady. Tom Brady also has a way better offensive line than, than Aaron Rodgers has, and he also has way better weapons than, than Aaron Rodgers had. Outside of Devontae uh, Adams last season, I mean, once you take him out of the equation, you got – Mike Evans, Godwin, you had Antonio Brown out there for a little while, uh, Gronkowski, you know what I mean, for net. Like, there's just so many weapons for Tom Brady, um, you know, so just this time. And I'm not saying take him out of the top five or anything like that. I just feel like if if you pushed him back to three and then brought Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Donald up to, to one and two, I'd be okay with that. And that's no, you know, that's no slight to Tom Brady because Tom Brady is Tom Brady. He's the GOAT. But I just feel like in this particular case, I don't think he's the best player in the NFL going into this season. I mean, I think there's a lot of things, a lot of factors and dynamics that go into that. You know, when you look at Tom Brady and you look at the philosophy of the Buccaneers, I mean, what Tom Brady is doing, leading the league in pass attempts and the interceptions, even though it may seem like it's, much is really not when you consider on the Bruce Arians or the quarterbacks on the Bruce Arians that had due for volume of interceptions. Like, for example, James Winston, who had 30 for 30 vision, the first one to ever do so, you know, and um, Ben Roethlisberger, Carson Palmer, interceptions, interceptions. So Tom Brady has brought a level of efficiency in an offense that's predicated on pushing the ball down the field and going to the biscuit, going for the biscuit, no biscuit, no biscuit. When you look at the Packers, their philosophy is, we got a head coach that's uh, X's and O's genius in Matt LaFleur. And we're going to run the football, A.J. Dillon, Aaron Jones. And we're going to do play action. We have the best wide receiver in football. So it's a more efficient approach. And it's results. It shows in Aaron Rodgers' stat lines the efficiency within that offense and that identity. So one is more efficient. One is more take risk. And yet Tom Brady, 12 interceptions is not a lot for that philosophy. And Tom Brady's just, I think what this list is, is the players saying Tom Brady was robbed, just like how I feel. He was robbed of winning MVP. He's still the best player. We see it on a day-to-day basis, and that's what I think this list is about more so than it is Aaron Rodgers won the MVP, should have got the, the nod. Well, again, I can't say he's the best player because I just think Aaron Donald is the, is the best player in football. And obviously, I you know, if, if it comes down to it, they're going to give the nod to a, a QB over a defensive play because the quarterback. True. That's a good know, point. True. Yeah. It has more of an effect on the, the total outcome of the game. They control so much. But if, if, we're just, if we're talking about just at an individual position and who is more dominant at their position, I think it's Aaron Donald hands down. Okay. It, you know I could I mean? agree with that. I could dig. I could dig that. You know, I still have Tom Brady over Aaron Rodgers personally. But if you want to go Aaron Donald at number one, I'm not finding that at all. I actually could co-sign that, to be honest. All right. I was gonna surprise. I thought she was gonna give me a little bit more pushback on that. Not, nah, 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 because that's true. I mean, Aaron Donald at his position, bro. There's nobody in the same vicinity. You yeah. can't say that about Tom Brady. Aaron Rodgers is in the vicinity. Patrick Mahomes is in the vicinity, but nobody's in the same vicinity when it comes to Aaron Donald. So that's dominance. Yeah, he just got to stop picking up helmets and practice and, and swinging on people. I don't need him getting suspended out here. You know, the Rams, the Rams might want to repeat this year. He can't be out here doing stuff like that in practice. I know I know the testosterone is built up, and, you know, it's football. Ah, everybody's extra aggressive, but you got to chill a little. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just wild, man. That, that's just crazy. Um, another another thing that's crazy, which uh, I'm going to tell you, this this shocked me um, because I was just talking about this brother uh, maybe like two weeks ago, uh, two, three weeks ago, I was talking about him. I was just asking, I was like, yo, is Geno Smith still in the league? Because I did not know if he was still in the league. And I literally asked somebody, so I go in and like, ah, yeah, he's still in the league. He's on the roster. And sure enough, you know, and we spoke about this, you know, you know, him a little while ago on the show. So I guess he must have been listening and turned his level of play all the way up because he was able to snag the Seattle Seahawks uh, starting quarterback spot. And, you know, for me not even realizing he was in the league three weeks ago, that's a hell of an accomplishment, man. I mean, it is. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> uh, how could I be nice here? You know, I, I'm in a good mood today, sort of. So, you know, I think when you talk about Seattle, bro, you know, I never knew why they traded Russell Wilson. I understand there was a philosophy war that was going on with Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll. But um, at the same time, Russell Wilson is your quarterback. You don't got to trade him. You know, you don't, when you trade a guy like Russell Wilson, you're committing to a full rebuild process and trying to find that next guy. And, and that's exactly what they're doing with their draft picks. Kenneth Walker, you know, you got with Sharp Penny, they're going to run the football. 
and, you know, just try to do what they did before with Russell Wilson when he came into that Legion of Boom and, or Doom, whatever, one of those. I think it was Doom, Legion of Doom in the running Legion game Legion and ease the Legion of Boom and ease the quarterback into a situation where he's not actually do a lot and win the Super Bowl in the process. I think that's what they're trying to do. But lo and behold, Geno Smith is just a placeholder. I don't think that's the guy going forward. I think he'll be the guy for this year, probably half the season. And I see Drew Locke coming in because I think Drew Locke has a level of explosiveness to him. He can't, you know, sometimes he tried to play hero ball too much. That's his problem. It was evident in the preseason game, especially the last one. You know, he'll throw a bomb and you're like, yo, that's a pretty neat throw. That That's a God gifted throw. I can't see too many quarterbacks out here that's making that throw. And then the next play here come with the foolishness, with the forcing the ball into a tight window that's not there. And it's an interception, not reading the safety off. Interception. So I think eventually they rock with Geno. Then they realize that, all right, let's see what the Drew Lock guy has because he's still a young guy. So maybe we can see if there's upside and just throw him in there, ease him in there, and then they'll try to go, you know, bottom out and try to get their real quarterback of the future. Maybe a C.J. Stroud from Ohio State or a guy like Bryce Young from Alabama. Roll Tide. Um, I, I agree. I do I do feel like it's a placeholder. Again, uh, you know, for reasons we spoke about earlier in the show, I'm happy that we got another brother starting that quarterback in this league. You know, Gino worked hard, I guess, and and, and got him a, a second chance. So I'm excited for him. Um, I, I agree with you as far as Drew Locke taking over. If 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 Gino starts off the season slow, um, which kind of sucks because they did lose, you know, a couple of key pieces from 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 last season. Um, you know what I mean? So we got to see how this goes. I do feel like, you know, and for, for you guys at home that picked up Rashad Penny, I think it's a good pickup uh, for fantasy football purposes because he played really well last season. Hopefully that'll help out uh, Geno Smith, having him, you know, running the football, if, if he can, can pick up from where he left off last season. But I do think they are looking for their quarterback of the future. Um, you know, there ain't no Legion of Boom no more. Shout out to a uh, former guest, Super Bowl champion, Walter Thurman, um, who was a member of that Legion of Boom Seattle Seahawks team. Um, you know what I mean? They, 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 they're they not that no more. They ain't that no more. This is kind of like the new Seattle coming into play. Um, you know, if Geno can hold on, you know, who knows? I, I, I can't say he was able to get the starting, starting job. Who knows how he does this season? Maybe he does hold on to the starting job this season. You know, if they if they go the first half of the season and and they're four and two, I don't think they go to Drew Lock. You know what I mean? So I think it all is all contingent. Geno Smith pretty much can write his own ticket this season. Um, and and if he does well enough, he can kind of finesse that into another contract from either the Seahawks or some other team. Um, you know, next season. So I wish I think- him the best. I think for Seattle, I actually think they're making the right decision as far as just building it back up, you know, full rebuild mode, because a lot of people don't don't want to commit to the rebuild. You know, when you're spoiled for winning championships and get into Super Bowls, it's hard to look in the mirror and say, all right, we got to bottom out. We try to compete. You see what the Colts are doing. I don't think the Colts are in a good position, kind of like I'm in the middle because they have a guy in Matt Ryan that's an upgrade from Wentz. But every year, it's trade a pick for a quarterback. Trade a pick for a quarterback. It's like those are assets that you're using, and you're not even winning a championship. You might as well try to bottom out and try to go for rebuild. Now, they got a championship roster, so it's hard to say that. But at least right now with Seattle, just bottoming out, even though they didn't have to, they had a quarterback, I think it's the right move for them to try to get their quarterback so they don't have to try to get a Jimmy Garoppolo and be a placeholder or Baker Mayfield, and he doesn't have the upside that some people think he has, you might as well just get your quarterback of the future and roll with him. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I agree. Uh, you know, in regards to the Colts, it's unfortunate, you know, that Andrew Luck decided to retire early because the Colts would be serious Super Bowl contenders right now if if, if Andrew Luck was still behind center. Um, but, yeah, you know, I listen. I don't know how much Matt, Matt Ryan got left in the tank. To be honest with you, he has not been the same since the score read 28 to 3. And <laughs> in, in the Super Bowl, he, that brother has not been the same since then. So I don't know what we're going to get from him, but I do know that the Colts have a good enough team 
Um, you got, you know, Michael Pittman Jr. You got a couple other receivers out there that are pretty good. You you may have the best running back, uh, you know, in, in football over there. Um, I mean, I know I know my 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 my, my main man <laughs> down in Tennessee might feel a little bit, bit differently about that, Derrick Henry, but you know, from what we saw last season, if he if it how how did Jay say it? If he ain't better than big, he's the closest one. <laughs> you know, so I think that yeah. uh they do have a good enough squad. Um, I would like to see them with a nice with a, with, with an upgrade at, at quarterback though, but who knows? You know, maybe Matt Ryan coming in, you know, that veteran experience. He's been to the playoffs several times. He's been to the Super Bowl. It didn't work out as planned, but he did go. He did go to the Super Bowl, guys. <laughs> but uh, maybe he'll be able to to work that out. I, I, you know, I don't know. Um, another team though that's gonna have to work some things out. Uh, the Dallas uh, Cowboys. They have officially lost their left tackle, uh, Ty Smith. He's out indefinitely. They're saying a couple of months, but uh. <sighs> Uh, you know, who knows with this kind of thing and who knows where Dallas will be, you know, when he's able to come back. Because one thing about Dallas, they're gr- great when they have that offensive line that they've had for for some time now. Obviously, the last couple of seasons, injuries have really taken a toll on them. But, you know, when you have, you know, guys out there like Zeke who – their success is contingent on how well that offensive line plays. And you take away one of, if not the best left tackle in football, uh, you know, I think it's going to be tough for him. I think, I think Zeke struggles. He's been struggling. His, his numbers have consistently gone down pretty much. I want to say this is a rookie season or maybe, maybe a second season. They've started to consistently uh, drop. And then, you know, with Dak, they just gave him all that money. He can't afford to get hurt again. So you're gonna they're gonna have to do something to shore up that that line. They're already missing a couple of, of receivers. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people felt Dallas would you know take the division, but you know they're, they're taking a lot of losses right now, and I, this one might be the biggest loss. No, absolutely, it is the biggest loss when you lose a lineman like that. I mean, that's where the Cowboys are predicated on their line. That's what made them. Uh, a team that was consistently, I won't say consistently, but made the playoffs a few times in the Dak Ezekiel era. But I think when you talk about what they want to do and their identity and what their identity should be, it should be one in the football. You got two backs, use them, bro. One of them out here making $90 million. The other one is out here looking explosive. Use them. You know, when you when you lose Amari Cooper and you have Mike Gallup, that's not going to be you know, playing until a couple weeks, however long he's going to be coming back from that ACL injury, you're going to have to run the football. That's what I assume the identity will be. Obviously, you got the young bull over there and CD Lamb, but um, it's about running the football, being strong in the trenches, and winning the games that way, keeping the opposing quarterback on the bench while you run down their throat. This is your African King that's coming, Michael Blackson. You watching real friends, real talk. Get real with it, my son. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Uh-huh.